To begin with, I'd really like to recognize that we're on the traditional lands and the traditional territory of the Metagamy and Flying Post First Nations. Uh, and I'd like to start with by inviting uh, Chief Boisineau of Metagamy First Nation to share an opening prayer. I have a small gift for you. Thank you. We're all going to have a bruised elbow here today after uh, all those hundreds of uh, welcomings. Uh, Hanin, um, welcome everybody to this uh, historic event there. So I'm going to start it off. Uh, I am going to say a few more words down uh, uh, later on. So I'll just start it off with an uh, opening prayer. So if I could get everybody to stand. We thank you, Creator, for giving us this beautiful day to celebrate this uh, uh, historic event for the First Nations of this traditional territory, the towns of this traditional territory, and the Northern Ontario people that will all thrive and benefit from the opportunities that are going to be available through this uh, project that we are all here to, uh, to uh, have this ceremony for. I'd like to thank the Creator for giving us the sun today that provides the heat and the warmth for our families, for our children, mothers, grandfathers, elders, the animals that provide us with the food, the berries and, uh, and the trees that provide us with uh, lumber for our homes and food for our children. And I'd like to thank the Creator for for the, for the breeze that's here today, that, that blows fresh air into our lungs, and to, to, which keeps us alive and healthy. And it's, um, like they always say, it's a breath of fresh air to be out on a, on a sunny day like this. Uh, I'd like to thank the Creator for providing us with the rain that we have every once in a while that nourishes the ground that we walk on, that Mother Earth has provided for us to use without, without um, tarnishing their, the, this great uh, country and uh, land that we live on. And I'd also like to thank my mother, my, past, my uh, late father, and my grandparents for, for giving me direction and guiding me to, to, to do what I've been doing for the last four years by representing my community and ensuring that they've, they get to be able to enjoy and prosper off the land, such as everybody else will be doing here in the near future. Uh, thank you, Creator. Miigwech. Thank you very, very much, Chief Wazano. Great to hear and great words. Great day. So I'm Gold, along with our partner Sumitomo Metalite Mining, would like to welcome you today to today's groundbreaking ceremony of the Cote Gold Project. Since announcing the, the decision to proceed with the construction of Cote in late July, we've been overwhelmed with the support we have received from this region. Today's groundbreaking ceremony marks another milestone for this project one which we've been working towards for the past eight years since we first acquired the project in 2012. We expect to Cote to be transformational for I Am Gold and for the region. While site preparation is already underway, construction activities will significantly ramp up in 2021. By July of next year, there will be upwards of a thousand workers in this area building Ontario's newest gold mine with an initial investment of about $1.8 billion Canadian. Beyond construction, Cote is expected to generate over 450 jobs during operations. An economic impact study we commissioned in 2018 estimated that Cote will generate over $5 billion in wages, direct and indirect, and more than $10 billion in GDP over the initial mine life. In our base case, the mine will be operational for 18 years after construction is complete. However, we are hoping to extend the mine life significantly with new resource discoveries like the adjacent Gosselin discovery, 
which we announced last year. I would like to welcome Don Charter, our chairman, who has joined us here today. The support of I Am Gold's Board of Directors has been fundamental in getting to this point, and I want to personally thank that group for their strong patronage. Our partner, Sumitomo Metal Mining, a global leader in the development and mining of non-ferrous metals, has been a key part of the Cote project development team. Sumitomo is a patient and constructive partner to I Am Gold. I cannot thank them enough for their continued support as we embark on this important undertaking. We are also honored today to be joined by Chief Chad Boisineau from Otagami First Nation and Chief Murray Ray from Flying Post First Nation. From day one, back eight years ago, we have strived to develop a close relationship with our host communities in a respectful and transparent manner, and we have been privileged to work with communities that engaged with us in the same spirit. We would truly not be here today without the support and leadership of these communities. Last year, we formalized our partnership with these First Nations by signing an impact benefit agreement. We are proud of that agreement and look forward to fulfilling its comments and intent by developing this project together with these communities. I would very much like to take this time to publicly acknowledge the support this project has received from all levels of government as well. We truly value the support we have received from Prime Minister Trudeau's government, including senior members of his team. I especially want to recognize MP and Parliamentary Sec Secretary Paul Lefebvre and MP Marc Serre for their tireless advocacy on, their on this project and their support in ensuring we received our most critical permits in a timely manner. I would also like to take this time to acknowledge the steadfast support we have received from Premier Ford's government to move this project toward realization. We greatly appreciate Minister Rickford and his team for energetically championing the Cote Gold project, both internally and externally. We have been able to de-risk the project from a permitting perspective at the provincial level due to the efforts of Ministers Rickford, Urick, and Jakubowski and their respective ministries. The support we have received from both levels of, it, of in government ultimately enabled Gold, I Am Gold and Sumitomo to make the construction decision this year. We are also truly grateful to all of the local MPPs, as well as Mayor Bigger of Sudbury and Mayor Peary of Timmins and other municipal representatives for being such vocal, steadfast advocates for the project. This event really is a testament to the strong efforts and collaborative spirit of all the stakeholders involved. Unfortunately, senior representatives from Sumitomo Metal Mining could not be here today due to COVID-19 related travel restrictions. The president of Sumitomo, Akira Nozaki, has sent me a quick note to read on their behalf, so I will do so. So on behalf of Sumitomo Metal Mining, I would like to congratulate everyone on today's groundbreaking ceremony for the Cote Gold Project. I would also like to express my sincere appreciation to those attending this ceremony despite the COVID-19 pandemic. I would like to be there, but due to the COVID-19 restrictions on entry into Canada, I was not able to make it work. I sincerely wish I could share in this happy occasion by personally offering you my congratulations. As we celebrate this momentous occasion, I would like to say a few words to you. The Cote Project is one of our three major projects around the world and an extremely important one for us. Since we joined the Cote Project in June of 2017, our engineers have worked with our key partner, I Am Gold, to increase the value of this project ahead of the start of construction. In the meantime, excuse me, with the warm and generous support of government officials, First Nations, and our neighbors, the Cote project is now ready to begin construction. Once again, I greatly appreciate everyone's help in allowing us to arrive at this juncture. I am confident that once this project will come into operation, it will be one of the most prominent gold mines in North America and will get greatly contribute to the development of local communities for many years to come. I would like to commit to pursuing the planned construction program together with I Am Gold with the highest standards of health and safety and care for the environment and with the utmost care and professionalism. 
We greatly appreciate your continued efforts and dedication to accomplish our common goal by building and operating the Kote Gold Mine. And that is signed, sincerely yours, Akira Nozaki, President and Representative Director of Sumitomo Metal Mining. I would now like to invite uh, MP Marc Serre to say a few words. Mr. Serre. Thank you, Gord. Hello, bonjour, Annie. Wow, this is a great event today. As a local MP for Nickel Belt, it's really an honor to be part of this day ceremony in beautiful Gogama, one of the most beautiful areas in Northern Ontario and Canada. It's a great honor also, and Gord mentioned a lot of the invitees that are here today, but also want a special shout out and welcome to both our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, Thank you for being here and Premier Ford also thank you for being here. This demonstrates why the mining sector is part of the solution for a greener and a more prosperous economy. I want to also thank both of them and all of you for your strong support for the Cote Gold project, for your ongoing support in the mining industry, for ongoing support for PDAC in Toronto, where Northern Ontario mining companies and supply and services businesses, members of Mine Connect, are showcased in the largest pavilion at PDAC, supported by FedNor. Northern Ontario is a regional hub and the heart of the Canadian mining industry. Why? Because of the Indigenous involvement. No other private industry in Canada employs as many Indigenous people as the mining sector. Innovation is rampant in the clean tech sector. Quality robust safety standards for our employees. Regreening solutions are abundant, just like the Sudbury story 40 years ago. Mining R&D within our post-secondary institutions and the private sector and the research centers like NORCAD and Sudbury. Merci à Engol. Vous êtes partie de l'équipe de l'Ontario dans le secteur minier. Merci d'avoir choisi Gogama, merci d'avoir choisi le nord d'Ontario pour vos investissements. Le projet Côté Gold profiterait également tout le nord de l'Ontario sur le plan social, économique. Cela contribue également à créer de nouvelles opportunités de partenariat pour attirer d'autres investisseurs de divers marchés mondiaux. Félicitations à tous qui sont ici présents. Félicitations à MGOL et la communauté pour ce moment que nous allons nous souvenir pour des années à venir. Annie Miigwech, a good friend, Chief Chad Boissonneau from Metogamy First Nations, Chief Ray from Flying Post First Nations, thank you. Thank you for working closely with I Am Gold. Thank you for your forward thinking. Thank you for embracing the community and the entrepreneurship that you provide to the area to promote the culture, the heritage, and the tradition. And it's great to see Gord Again, President uh, CEO Ivan Gold, both Paul and I have met with Gord at, at PDAC. Every year at PDAC, you'll see the yellow T-shirts, I am Gold T-shirts going around the area. Great perseverance. And thank you, Gord, and your team at I am Gold for supporting Gogamo local businesses. This afternoon, you'll be meeting with uh, Jerry Talbot of the Gogamo Chamber of Commerce to provide some additional funding to the area. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, finally, Gord and the entire team at I am Gold. You can count on the federal government. You can count on local MPs, Paul Lefebvre and myself. My colleague, Paul, is also the, prime, the parliamentary secretary for the Minister of Natural Resources. Paul continues to be a champion for the mining sector as his role as parliamentary secretary. We are both committed to support I am Gold and, his, uh, I am Gold and the employees. Alors, merci tout le monde d'être ici. Une grande journée, la cérémonie pour célébrer L'ouverture d'une mine qui va apporter beaucoup d'importance ici dans l'Ontario. Thank you so much, Miigwech. Alors, je demanderai maintenant à mon collègue Paul Lefebvre de venir dire quelques mots pour inviter le Premier ministre. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Marc. Quelle belle journée. What a beautiful day. This is a great day for Kogama, great day for Metogamy, great day for Flying Post. Great day for Timmins, great day for Sudbury. It's a great day for Northeastern Ontario, and this is a great day for the mining supply sector of the whole area. 
This is jobs, jobs, jobs that are coming here and responsible you know, extractions that are going on right in Northern Ontario. I really want to take this opportunity to, you know what, at, this is the first time ever in this area that we have a Prime Minister come and join us. So I am thrilled, and I was thrilled, when I invited the Prime Minister to come, and he jumped on the opportunity to come and see us all right here and to share in this beautiful day. Donc, sans plus tarder, le très honorable Justin Trudeau, Premier ministre du Canada. Bonjour à tous. Merci, Paul. Merci, Marc, pour cette introduction. Et merci à chacun de vous pour le travail exceptionnel que vous faites en représentant les gens de Sudbury et de Nickel Belt. Je sais à quel point c'est important pour vous que les gens de la classe moyenne aient accès à des bons emplois solides. Alors, c'est encore plus merveilleux de vous avoir parmi nous aujourd'hui ici. It's great to be here today with Premier Ford, Doug. It's always so good to see you again. We also have Sudbury Mayor Brian Bigger and Timmins Mayor George Peary. And I'd like to take a moment to thank Chief Boissonneau for his welcome and Chief Ray for joining us and I am Gold CEO Gord Stoddart for welcoming us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize that today marks 19 years since the horrific terrorist attacks on September 11th, 2001. Today, we remember the people we lost in this unthinkable tragedy. They were neighbors, friends, and family. As we pay tribute to their lives, let's also remember the bravery and the sacrifice of all the first responders who arrived on the, arrived on the scene and rushed into buildings as others were fleeing. À l'occasion de la Journée nationale de service du Canada, nous rendons hommage aux gens de partout au pays qui mettent leur vie en danger pour aider les autres. Au cours des derniers mois, les Canadiens ont été témoins des immenses sacrifices des femmes et des hommes qui sont aux premières lignes et qui ont travaillé jour et nuit pour assurer notre sécurité. Au nom de tous les Canadiens, merci pour tout ce que vous avez fait et continuez de faire pour notre pays. It's great to be here at the groundbreaking of the Côté Gold Mine. I know this is not just big news for the people of Gogama, but also for folks in Sudbury, Timmins, and right across Northern Ontario. During construction, this project will create more than a thousand good jobs for people in the area, as well as 450 full-time positions once it's completed. This project was made possible by international partner Sumimoto Metal and went through an environmental assessment done by Environment and Climate Change Canada. We introduced the Canadian Minerals and Metals Plan to support projects just like this one. Projects that make Canada a great place to do business and create and protect good, lasting jobs for Canadians. Plus tôt cette année, je suis allé au Congrès mondial sur l'exploration et l'exploitation minière de l'Association canadienne des prospecteurs et entrepreneurs à Toronto. Je me souviens d'y avoir parlé de la rapidité à laquelle se transforme l'économie mondiale et les raisons pour lesquelles le Canada doit être un chef de file dans le secteur minier afin de conserver de bons emplois dans nos communautés. Évidemment, dans les mois qui ont suivi, l'économie mondiale s'est transformée. Mais une réalité n'a pas changé, celle de l'importance des projets comme celui-ci pour les travailleurs, les familles et pour notre économie. Plus que jamais, nous aurons besoin d'une relance économique inclusive et équitable pour tout le monde. Voilà pourquoi c'est formidable que voir que les Premières Nations avoisinantes, la Première Nation de Flying Post et celle de Matagami, sont également partenaires de ce projet. C'est un exemple de plus qui montre que, lorsqu'on travaille ensemble, nous pouvons créer de bons emplois pour les communautés d'un bout à l'autre du pays. There's no doubt that the last few months have been hard for a lot of businesses across the country because of COVID-19. And the virus is still a health threat around the world and here at home. So as we safely reopen our economy, it will take time for us to make up the economic ground we lost to the global pandemic. But this project shows how our economy is getting back on its feet. International investors know that Canada 
is a good place to do business. Even as we face tough economic times around the world, global investors have confidence in Canadians. Right now, we have an opportunity to build a more resilient Canada, a Canada that's healthier and safer, more inclusive and fair, a Canada that's both greener and more competitive in the global economy of the future, tackling the threat of climate change while creating good jobs for years to come. As anyone in the mining industry already knows, we can't solve climate change without strong leadership from the natural resources sector. Just take the Borden mine, which became Canada's first all-electric mining facility. Innovations across this sector will be crucial for a green recovery and will help drive the clean transition that we need. From the nickel and cobalt that are used in batteries for electric vehicles and solar panels, the mining sector is really important in building a better future for us all. So our government stands ready to work with companies to build that more resilient, healthier country where everyone has a real and fair chance to succeed. Ce secteur a la possibilité de créer de bons emplois durables pour les Canadiens, de stimuler notre économie et de paver la voie de la relance verte. Et cela commence par des projets comme celui-ci. Nous allons continuer de travailler avec tous les ordres de gouvernement afin d'assurer un meilleur avenir pour tous les Canadiens. Merci beaucoup. Je suis maintenant très content de céder la parole au Premier ministre Ford. Doug. Well, first of all, good morning, everyone, and great to be here with the Prime Minister. Every time we get together, we seem to be having great announcements. So this is great when you're, everyone's pulling in the same direction and, and working together that uh, we've been working together from day one of the COVID, and I appreciate the Prime Minister's leadership, the Mayor's leaderships, the Indigenous communities' uh, leaderships. And it's great to be here in beautiful Gogama, the heart of Northern Ontario. Bringing jobs to every part of this province is a top priority of our government. And I'm honored to be supported. I always say my all-star ministers, Minister Greg Rickford, Minister Yakabuski, they're both doing an incredible job and, and driving jobs forward. They're two of the hardest working ministers that I know down at Queen's Park for Northern Ontario. I'd also like to recognize Chief Bozano. Chief, thank you, and Chief Ray. This couldn't happen without you. Without your cooperation, there wouldn't be 450 uh, full-time jobs. There wouldn't be a thousand construction jobs. So we're very, very grateful and you're absolute champions and thank you for your leadership. But I also want to thank Gord. Gord, thank you and your team. And I am gold for investing and having uh, faith in not only Ontario and Canada, within the indigenous community and thank you for our working with them. We can accomplish anything, as I said earlier, when we work together. After months of seeing COVID-19 hit our economy hard, we see a glimmer of hope. We see new opportunities right across our country and our province, and we take another step forward on the road to economic recovery. Today, we're breaking ground on an incredibly important project here at the future site of Cote Gold Mine. As you've heard many people say, again, creating 450 full-time jobs, that's 450 people that can pay the bills now. They can help out their families and their, and their communities, put food on their table. And during the construction, this project, as we've heard again, over a thousand, thousand uh, construction jobs that's so important for the region as a, as a whole. And those people are gonna be able to put a paycheck in their pocket and pay the bills and support the economy. It's absolutely incredible how one project can change so many lives in a community. And I know Minister Rickford, Minister Yakabuski will speak to this in a moment. But I just want to say, it's always a good day when we hear those words, we have a problem with red tape. I love when people tell me that because those are the areas that we can support you. And it doesn't cost the taxpayers a second. It, I mean, a, a penny. It, it, it just needs the political will to get uh, moving forward. And, and I want to again thank the Prime Minister and all my ministers for uh, pushing this forward. 
And that's exactly the case for, for this project. We were able to work with the Ministries of Energy, Minister of Natural Resources, and, and Minister of Environment. And the environment is, is critical. We go through the process and to streamline approvals, remove roadblocks, and make sure the project got shovels in the, in the ground. We're ready to get Ontario back on track. Ontario is a mining powerhouse around the world. We're a leader when it comes to exploration and, and production. Ontario's mining sector contributes $10 billion directly to Canada's GDP, employs over 71,000 people across our great country. After years of delay and decline and neglect, our government has been able to work with the industry partners to breathe new life into the sector and attract new investments. We've also worked closely with local municipalities, community leaders, and of course, our Indigenous partners. And we need to keep going. With every shovel in the ground, we're taking another step towards recovery. Another step to ensuring no part of Ontario is left behind. We will work together to build a better, stronger future for the people of Northern Ontario and for the people across this great province. And we won't stop until every single community, every single business, and every single person in this province is back on their feet. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. And I'd like to invite one of our colleagues up, MPP, Michael Mantha. Michael, you're doing a great job too, my friend. All the best. Is Michael here? There you are, Michael. Thank you. Sorry, there's been a slight change in the program. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to actually invite uh, MPP Jelena, France Jelena, um, uh, to come up and present a certificate, I understand. All good, all good. We work as a team. Good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Annie. Bougeot. My name is France Gelina, and I'm the MPP for Nickel Belt. I would like to welcome Chief Ray, Chief Boissonneau, or not Premier Ministre, Monsieur Justin Trudeau, uh, Premier Ford, the mayors of Sudbury, Timmins, mes bons amis de Gogama, the Metagamy, the Bisco, the West Tree, the Shining Tree, tout le monde de Nickel Belt. Welcome to beautiful Nickel Belt. I do have colleagues with me. <laughs> You've been introduced to Michael Manta, who is our critic for um, mining. But Michael needs no introduction in this part. Michael was born and raised in Gogama and pretty much knows everybody that goes on around here. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Jamie West. Jamie West is the MPP for Sudbury. Uh, Jamie comes from 20 years in mining. Uh, he knows full well that there are good jobs in mining. And, of course, Gilles Bisson. Gilles is the MPP for Timmins. He comes with 30 years being an MPP. Uh, let me tell you, this uh, uh, mine was a long time in coming, but Gilles was there every step of the way to bring us to this very happy occasion here today. That was a long time in coming. It was not easy, but I am gold putting the time, the effort, the energy to make sure that they had a success. When I first took their phone call in 2012 and the first meetings, um, let's just say that there was many hurdles, uh, but they overcome them one at a time. You are in beautiful Nickel Belt. In Nickel Belt, we have been mining since 1886. That's 134 years. You know what we've learned in 134 years? We've learned that you can mine in a way that is respectful to the First Nation, in a way that is respectful to every workers, in a way that is respectful to every community, in a way that respects the environment as well. You will find in Nickel Belt a train and willing workforce. 
people that are used to getting up early and putting in a full day. You will find a mining supply and services that are ready to help you with whatever hurdles comes your way. And you will find in Nickel Belt a few mining giants also, such as Valley and Glencore, who know a thing or two about mining. Mining is welcome here. We have the knowledge, we have the body of knowledge to make sure that it is done in a way that is sustainable and in a way that allows you to succeed, all of us to succeed. I know that there will be a few hurdles coming, uh, but we will be there. My colleagues will be there. We will help you. This will succeed because when there's good people like this all around, I know that success is there. Today is a happy day. Uh, Cote Mine is finally here. And I do have a scroll for you, Gord, at two meters apart because I haven't got my mask. <laughs> it <That> goes. <laughs> no, Northern Ontario local MPPs are pleased to congratulate IM Gold Corporation in honor of the groundbreaking for the Cote Gold project. We have a little quote for you. All things are created twice. First, mentally, then physically. The key to creativity is to begin with the end in mind, with a vision and a blueprint of the desired result. And that comes, of course, from Stephen Covey. Best wishes from myself, from John Vantoff, Timis Kim and Cochran, Jill Bisson, MPP Timmons, Michael Manta, MPP Manitoulin, uh, Algoma Manitoulin, and Jamie West. So this is all yours. At Merci a safe beaucoup. distance. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Chemiwech. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, MPP Jalina. Um, I would now like to uh, invite uh, Chief Boisonneau once more of Matagami First Nation to share with us his thoughts. Thank you. Let's see if I could uh, understand my wife's uh, writing here, so uh, bear with me. <laughs> so again, uh, Anin, Buju, hello. Uh, on behalf of Matagami First Nation, I'd just like to welcome uh, all the participants, our friends, our provincial and federal leaders, you know, Mr. Doug Ford, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and uh, there's so many people in uh, uh, politicians that I met here today, I apologize uh, if I can't uh, pronounce your name. Uh, uh, Mr. Mark Sierre, who is always reaching out to me to see how things are going, and uh, you know, all the other party reps like Mike. And uh, Mike, uh, there's a history with me and Mike, and uh, I'd just like to share with you, eh? um, years ago when we grew up playing baseball, broom ball, broom ball was a big sport around this area, and a lot of people were surprised when they heard we played broom ball. They didn't know what it was, and uh, they thought it was just chasing a ball around with a bunch of brooms. Uh, well, probably that is exactly what it is. <laughs> so then, uh, then we converted over to hockey and that. But you know, growing up with Mike uh, during the years and that, and then uh, you know, as we get older, we we kind of separate and go our different ways, uh, have families. Uh, Mike moved away to. Uh, to do reveal and he was in the lumber business then the next thing you know um, I find out he's uh, he's into the political uh, venue so f eventually I ran into him there years later and I just told him I said Mike when you are when, when you make prime minister I got stuff on you man <laughs> <laughs> so um, so to, to continue I just like to say that uh, you know today is going to be a, a historical event that uh, fortunately we are able to have, considering that the virus that has plagued uh, many parts of this world. Today we start the, cell, start the process of a prosperous journey for all stakeholders, local communities and their members, and many other communities that this project will support for the benefit of our families and future generations of the next 20 plus years. More importantly, I'd like to thank the Creator for the sacrifice that our Mother Earth has given us by providing the minerals that will be extracted for this and the vast amounts of employment opportunities this project will create to build and finally process the sought-after resource. 
I really like to thank the elders and past generations who, without their sacrifice, there may not have been such a long, uh, this may not be happening. There's, there's a long history and many stories that the site holds from decades of persistent exploration programs that uh, use a variety of past and present techniques to map out the minerals that lie beneath us. Stories and facts about the many faces that worked at the area of the deposit. Even myself, I, I worked here uh, 33 years ago in 1986. I, I've had the pleasure of diamond drilling underground when it was an exploration ramp, so it's, it's been on, on, um, on the go for quite a few years. We've seen uh, multiple groups of companies that came and went throughout the decades and, uh, and uh, it changed ownership uh, a few times, you know, such as Chester Miracle Resources, Osprey Gold, Trelawney, are a few of the names that I'm familiar with, and finally our present partner, I am Gold and Sumutomo, who will now take us to a higher level of certainty that we can continue to enjoy the area and all the other resources that Mother Earth provides for us, such as hunting, fishing, traditional medicines, and are, are among some of the, the fruits that we utilize. And also being able to continue to teach our young generation the traditions and history of this area by being able to stay in the area for the jobs that are much needed for many people that continue living in this unique and diverse landscape and traditional terry of metogamy, flying posts, and gogama. Um, the topography were the two main, topography in this area and the two main industries were forestry and mining have dictated the lifestyles of the past and present. We did have other opportunities such as the MNR and the CN Railway who also contributed to some of the success stories but also some not so good stories that had devastating impacts on the community members and the people of the region. Remember not long ago, we had uh, the big derailment in the area and it was unfortunate. Uh, as a parent of two sons and a grandparent of two beautiful grandkids, grandsons, I sometimes share my memories of this, of the changes that I've seen over the last half a century, such as remembering that uh, it doesn't seem that, that long ago that uh, the only access of getting up here when as growing up in Sault Ste. Marie, when we come to visit was by train and we had to drive to Cape Royal and catch the train to come up here because there was no highway through here. So that's how old I am. <laughs> and uh, my, my kids, they look at that and they, you know, they can't believe that. Uh, with each other, the jobs that are, will ensure that our children will be taken care of through the sacrifices that we've all shared to get us here today. I'd like to thank I.M. Gold and Gord and his corporate guys and uh, 
the past CEO, Steve Letwin, who was a very nice guy to deal with as well. And uh, everybody else that was involved in, uh, actually one more guy, uh, Dave. Everybody, nobody really knows Dave too much, but Dave Brown was instrumental, part of uh, the I Am Gold team. He was a ground, grounded person here on the site and developed a, a good relationship with all members of the communities, Flying Post and Metogamy. And uh, sometimes you had to tell him to go home, but uh, he got the message. So again, miigwech everybody. Thank you for being here today and uh, we look forward to the future. Thank you. So I, I earlier had an opportunity to uh, to present uh, Chief Wazano with a uh, with an offer of tobacco and thank him for his for all his efforts and uh, please accept our token of our gratitude. Um, I would now like to invite uh, Chief Murray Ray of Flying Post First Nation to speak because I know he likes to speak. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. I think, I think he knows that I'm really, really scared now. <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, like, what a beautiful day. Everybody keeps saying that it is. Well, even if it was raining, it's a beautiful day. I, 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 I was shocked. I didn't know, uh, Prime Minister, you were coming today. Mr. Ford, they wouldn't tell me this stuff. <laughs> and, and now I'm just, like, in awe. And, and uh, I went through from the drive here, uh, from, a, from our perspective, a native perspective of, of what this means. And you won't know what it means to our First Nations to, to be here, to be part of this. Uh, we welcomed family that we have. And that's what we are now, is a family. Uh, I'm probably... I'm probably uh, the oldest running chief in Ontario. I, I, I've been doing this for 25 years and, and I was thinking today, this is the best day that I've had. And I've had a few, right? And this is great. It's great for our First Nations, for our kids. When we tell them to go to school, they, they've got a place to come to go to work. You know, our elders are going to be taken care of now. So it, it, it's, my mind has just been racing ever since four o'clock this morning. With this stuff here, uh, when I started as chief, uh, one of the elders told me is is uh, every decision you make is, is is you're making history, and it's up to you whether you make good history or bad history. Uh, I I just want to make good history. I probably made some bad, but this here, uh, the relationship when we were talking about it earlier, is when I I was here at at the start. With, with I Am Gold, uh, with uh, a few of my partners. I give a shout out to my tribal council uh, executive, Jason Batiste, his brother Sean, uh, helped me personally get to this point. But ever since we started with I Am Gold, uh, Chief Buzno said the same thing. It, it was uh, Dave who I met, uh, the whole negotiating team, uh, there's Steve's, there's more Steve's than I am gold, right? <laughs> and, and, and right from the start, it, it, it was not never a fight. It was never, and, and uh, I listened to what goes on in politics, you know, what, ring of fire and stuff like that. We've never had that problem, right from day one. Gordon, his team, is, we sat down and, and it took a while, but we had time, eh? And, and as, as, what a beautiful relationship that we got now. Uh, when the COVID first started and I was, I was sitting at home, uh, a phone rang. And uh, I didn't know who it was. You know, I, can't, I don't recognize the number. I said hello anyway. And it was Gord. So, you know, the CEO of this big major company, whatever, he phones me. He says, hey, Chief, how are you doing? How's things with, you know, how are you dealing with the COVID? How's the First Nation doing? Is there anything I could do to help? And I'm like, that's the team I want to be on. That's why we get along. And that's why I think you've heard over and over again about the relationship between First Nations and, and, and I am gold. 
and all uh, uh, again, uh, Minister Rickford. I, I got. I'm rambling now because I don't have a speech. Other, yeah, other, yeah, yeah. <laughs> other, other, other than this COVID, this has been the best year for Flying Post in, in its history in a hundred and some years. We just finished a land claim this year with uh, tremendous help from our ministers here, and and uh, Canada is is right behind. I know the checks in the mail, so so so. <laughs> So other than the COVID, like I said, Flying Post is, 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 is just a, a fantastic day for our First Nation. I think First Nations across the country can learn. Uh, I know if you have problems with First Nations in other places like Rig of Fire, talk to Gordon and his team because they treated us like, like family. And, that's, it, it, and it seems like that all the time. It's, it's like, yeah, you have a little bit of fight. You know, it's like brothers or sisters or your wife or something. But we all we come back here and now we're standing here today and, and it's 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 gonna be a great future for all of us. So with that, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As always some, some great words from Chief Ray. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um so I would now like to invite uh, the Ontario Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry, John Yakabuski, to come up and say a few words. There you go. <laughs> It'd be more memorable, wouldn't it, Joe? Well, thank you very much, Gord, and uh, thank to everyone for being here today. Chief Bosnell, Chief Ray, Prime Minister, Premier Ford, my colleagues and from the Ontario Legislature and MPs as well. Mayor Bigger and I uh, heard some other Mayor of Timmins, uh, others, all, all, everyone here today. It is a absolutely fantastic day and I, I couldn't help but, yeah, I go and take this off, I guess. God, thank goodness. I forgot it. You get so used to putting them on, you forget to take them off. But uh, um, Chief Vosno's story makes me think a little bit about Gogama. I'm not, haven't spent some too much time here, but our oldest boy, uh, worked a few years at Halfway Lake, so he spent a lot of time at Gogama, hunting, fishing up this way. And our youngest lad, when he was 16, came up with uh, Lucas, came up with Zachary, and he bagged his first bear up here near Gogama, Gogama. And he took one of my rifles at that time. He didn't own any of his own. He took my one of my rifles, a Browning 308. And when he came back home. His first words to me were, Dad, there's nothing wrong with the gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. You know. Yeah, exactly. Nothing wrong with the gun. In fact, I don't see it anymore. He now, he now owns it. Um, but uh, so it's, it's just wonderful for me to be back up here uh, today uh, as part of this absolutely tremendous announcement. I'm pleased to be here to celebrate the start of construction for this great mining project. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry is working closely with IM Gold and has been, and we are pleased to be part of this project that will bring good jobs to northern communities. My ministry balances the management of Ontario's biodiversity with supportive economic opportunities in the resource sector through the permitting and authorizing process. This resource-rich area has considerable economic development potential and our goal is to encourage that economic growth. Diversification and job creation in our northern communities. Our government supports development that is beneficial to those communities while maintaining our commitment to conservation. We are also committed to making government work more efficiently on the approval and permitting side of the, of the equation. We want to help job creators like I Am Gold get shovels in the ground faster so that communities like Gogama can start to realize the benefits of this development. 
And I must say, when Gord was rhyming off some of those numbers, the economic numbers, the job numbers, the uh, contribution to the economy numbers, they were not just mind-boggling, they were mind-boggling. Absolutely amazing the difference that this is going to make, not only to this area, but when, when this area prospers, the whole province of Ontario, our country of Canada prospers as well. And that means for us, in my ministry, going to reduce, that we go to reduce burdens for business, streamline requirements, and speed up those approvals whenever we can. And this will be especially important as we work to get our economy back on track. I'd like to offer my sincere congratulations to IM Gold and your partners as you break ground on this exciting new project. And I would now like to turn things over to my friend and colleague, the Honorable Greg Rickford, Minister of Energy, Northern Development and Mines, and Minister of Indigenous Affairs. Thank you very much. Miigwech. Thank you, uh, John, and thank you, uh, uh, Prime Minister, Premier, for your leadership here in Ontario and making this day possible. Thank you, uh, Chief Boisineau and Chief Ray. Chad, I appreciated your story. We actually have a lake called Blindfold Lake, not far from Lake of the Woods. It finds its name in the people who actually understood the abundance of fish there and, and took uh, guests uh, in their blindfold. To this day, we stand on our lakes out in northwestern Ontario, and when folks ask us where we got our catch, we go, out there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nanya. Nanya business. That's good. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Still, bonjour, Annie, bonjour, Kina. Uh, greetings, everyone. Je suis heureux d'être ici avec vous aujourd'hui pour célébrer ce jalon très important, le lancement de la construction de la mine côté gold de l'Ontario. Je vous fais écho au Premier ministre en félicitant tout le monde à la société I Am Gold Corporation qui a travaillé jour et nuit pour mener à bien ce projet minier. This has been a challenging time as has been discussed already for this industry and indeed sectors across this province and across this country and around the world. We have seen the pro profound effects of COVID-19 on operations, project financing, and production worldwide in the mining sector. But today's event, ladies and gentlemen, demonstrates this industry's rich history of resilience and perseverance during trying times. It was only a year and a half ago that the Cote Gold Mine project was at a standstill. And the future of the project and the jobs that come with it were in jeopardy. We know it is through no small feat to get a mine in the ground. It takes the collective efforts, indigenous leadership, political leadership, much of which is here today, and especially uh, Team Gote, uh, Cote Gold for uh, their perseverance and commitment to making this a realization. It was Indeed, a year and a half ago that this project was buried in regulatory delays and our government was proud to step in and help advance this project with urgency. We actually developed a SWAT team, didn't we, Gord? It was an all-ministry, uh, all-ministers approach. Across government in Ontario, we committed. We committed to Cote Gold, I am Gold, and we committed to the leadership here today. I think it was on a day in Timmins there at the, ch at the chamber, Chad, that we spoke to cut through the previous government's bureaucratic red tape and inaction that stalled this industry in Northern Ontario. It's well documented. So I'm proud to see this monumental investment move forward right here in Ontario. And I know the good people at I Am Gold know they can rely on our government to stand alongside this project through construction and into its long-term operations. We will always support companies like I Am Gold, Metogamy First Nation, Flying Post First Nation and numerous other communities across this vast and wonderful place we call Northern Ontario. Notice I didn't say the province of Northern Ontario. Today we're proud to add the Cote Gold Mine to our government's roster of mining success stories. Joining the likes of Heart Gold's Sugar Zone and how sweet it was for the Premier and I to go up there. Newmont Gold's Corpse Borden Mine, the Prime Minister mentioned, moving those mines across critical milestones, the electrification or its opening.
These are extraordinary opportunities for Northern Ontario, for the province of Ontario, and for this great country of Canada. And so it is today we have a renewed focus on the future of mining in Ontario. Instead of the issues, it's about the opportunities. And it reminds us of the tremendous economic and social economic, uh, opportunity this sector has to offer as we move into a period of recovery. As we look to the future, I'd be remiss not to mention the incredible potential that exists just 1,000 kilometers northwest of us in the Ring of Fire. Yet another project burned by, uh, uh, burdened by over a decade of delays, bureaucracy, I'm proud that just after just two years, our government has made real tangible progress to finally move this project forward. We're encouraged by the signals from the federal government to work as partners with the communities proximal to Eagle's Nest and the other extraordinary mining sites that may be available. For the first time in a decade, I believe there's a real opportunity that we could, we could be standing there, Prime Minister and Premier, in a place just like this. Ontario cannot open the Ring of Fire alone and not, neither can its Indigenous communities. We hope that the federal government will join us on cost sharing and critical infrastructure projects, move forward with us on environmental assessments that provide a bright future for the communities proximal to those, that opportunity and indeed for the municipalities across northern Ontario, specifically Martin Falls First Nations and Webequay First Nations, who are leading the sole proponents of the initial road for, uh, uh, infrastructure. I look forward to working closely with industry and Indigenous partners, Chief Ray, just like the story you told here today. I see and I think it's possible and for the first time we believe that we have the support of all levels of government to come over, overcome the issues focus on the opportunities and create something incredible like we're celebrating here today. Thank you for this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, and congratulations to Cote Gold. Well, thank you very much, Minister Rickford. Uh, now we get to do some work. Un unfortunately, I didn't have enough time yesterday to, to re-up my, my uh, my safety training on, on my shovel, so we're going to have to use a little more manual version. Um, and this one, by the way, is small. When you come back in a couple of years to have a look at this place, that probably fits in the cab. Anyways, um, so I would invite our Chairman Don Charter, Prime Minister Trudeau, Premier Ford, Chief Boisano, Chief Ray, Minister Yakabuski, and Minister Rickford, MP Serre and Parliamentary Secretary Lefebvre to each take a shovel and break ground with me, please.